Las Vegas and the World Series of Poker have been around a long time. The only person I know who's been around as long as that is Norman Chad. We came down the Fremont Street to catch up with the legend. It's amazing how far the World Series has gone. You know what I mean, Norm? You know what I mean, Norm? You know what I mean, Norm? Norm? Norm! Hey, hey, Todd. Were you sleeping? No, I was paddle boating, numb nuts. <sighs> Did you hear anything that I just said? I hear you now, and that's more than enough. What's up? Are you ready for your ride? Yeah, let's go. So you were talking about, you know, how you got your start at the World Series of Poker. Just curious. I was? Yeah. Uh, 2003, the Chris Moneymaker year. So how did that happen? It was, a, actually, it was like a dream, you know? It was a dream that Moneymaker won, but before that, I'd never done poker before. I wasn't a poker professional. I just played recreationally. I wasn't a TV guy. And somehow they asked me to want you color commentate this we'll just do a few episodes. And I said, okay, maybe we'll do it. And then we did it. I thought it was for a few episodes. So who came first, you or Lon? Uh, I always come before Lon. But in this situation, they had Lon because he had done it the year before uh, with Gabe Kaplan when Robert Varconi won. So the production company came in and they said, Lon, we'll use Lon. And then they were talking to me while I was working at ESPN, just helping them with uh, poker production stuff that they didn't know about. And then after I did that for a while, they said, do you want to do it? You make us laugh during the conference calls and you seem pretty funny and we're not going to use a poker pro. I did think, I, I told him I had to think about it for a while. It was poker on TV. I mean, it didn't even exist. But based on the fact that I had no career at that time, uh, I said yes. And I just thought it was a one year thing. We were going to do seven episodes of the main event and then move on with our lives. Did you ever imagine that it would take off? No, I had no idea. I, I liked the idea of showing poker on TV. I didn't think anybody would watch it. I really didn't think anybody would watch it. Uh, but I loved the idea of doing it because I loved that world and I knew they were great characters, but I didn't think anybody would watch it. I had no idea it would take off. It's been mostly positive for all of us. It, it's, it, at this moment, it's not positive for me. It ends up with me sitting with you in a car, having to talk to you. And frankly, that's not what I planned to when I went to college. But yeah, it's, it's been above any of our expectations. The changes that we've seen in the poker world and with poker on TV have just been ridiculous. I mean. What have you noticed, I mean, the evolution of poker on TV and everywhere? Well, obviously the thing, it, because the, the World Series of Poker was bought and sold, it left Binions. But it would, as it turns out, it would have outgrown Binions. I mean, we could, we could barely fit 800 people in there the year that Moneymaker won, and we only did it there then the next year, and then we left for the Rio. But I miss Binions. Uh, the Rio is a great facility for us to do it. We need that space, but it's more corporate, it's more sterile. Binions felt like gambling. It looked like gambling. It smelled like gambling. In fact, other than the gambling smell, the two other smells I, I remember most from Binion's was the corned beef from this incredible deli in the middle of the, the casino, which was tiny, and the smell of urine from the third and fourth floors, if you stayed in Binion's, was just overpowering. But uh, gambling still was the, the biggest thing. You know, Benny Binion set up a place in which he was renowned for, infamous for, he took all bets from all comers. There was no limit. Anyone could walk in at any time, put down as much money as they want to, you know, on the roulette table, on the blackjack table, on the dice table, he would accept all bets. So anyone could crack them at any given time. That's just a great old school concept. I would imagine over the last 15 years, and then even before then, you were playing poker, you must have some stories. Is there one or two that stands out? My favorite story is when my, my wife set me up, my first wife set me up before we were married, and I always told her I would never, I would never borrow to gamble. And uh, a game came up, and uh, my ATM card had been eaten up by the machine, and she knew that. And I told her it might be a game tonight, but she says, you're not going to borrow to gamble. I said, yeah, I, I won't borrow to gamble. I got home from work. I was working late. I got home at 11 o'clock at night. She left her purse out with her ATM card sticking out of the purse. It was entrapment all the way. I went, I took the thing. I went, I used the ATM. I got $300. I got killed that night. I lost every penny I got. I come back in the morning at 6 or 7 in the morning, because uh, I played overnight. She's going to be going to work in about another hour. I slip into bed. She's not asleep. As soon as I slip into bed, she says to me, when I get home from work tonight, I don't want you here. 
I'm like, what are you talking about? You said you would never borrow to play poker. But you left her ATM card. No, 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 that's it. You didn't borrow. That's what I thought. She, I thought, by the way, I thought by leaving her card out there, she was indicating to me, it's okay if you want to go to a game, go do it. But it was entrapment.